All right, guys. So I got, I've been using this product made by Julian Sprung, two little fishes. I have this uh, service customer. She has a, she has a gonio porridge that was starting to fade. And then for, I went to Miami. I don't remember what happened. And then I, I went to Julian Sprung because one of my suppliers didn't add something. So I went to his factory. So I talked with him. Watch his tank was pretty cool. He showed me the thing to make salt. Then he explained me something very interesting about goniopores. There's some trace elements that are missing, but I have them here and it will show you better. I got some images of the evolution of this goniopora with time. Once I started with this one, and then and then I also started dosing this. But let me get Julian and it will explain a lot better than me why the goniopor is doing good with this one and this bad boy julia all right just formal hi isn't it lucky he was just talking about me and here i am yeah right you know cool. he was like probably that, under one of my tanks that's it <laughs> yeah you know that stuff that rolls underneath there you know uh there i was um so anyway, uh, yes, I, I'll be happy to explain why that works. I'll, I'll just backtrack a little bit. Uh, there once a, upon a time, and I think probably it's still in the consciousness of hobbyists, uh, Ganyapora species were considered impossible to keep in aquariums. It was a typical experience. People would buy them. They're beautiful. They look great for maybe a few months, and then slowly, slowly they decline. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody knew why. Uh, I didn't even know why. Um, how did but, you came up with the... Uh... Well, uh, you know, it's not for lack of trying. So um, what happened was I had, uh, in, in this case, a, a purple Ganyapora that I found, you know, it was beautiful and irresistible. Uh, and I was motivated to keep it because I'd had uh, quite some success with one of the red Ganyaporas. And this is, to put it in perspective, is in the mid-1990s is when mm. this was happening. Um, and so I noticed when I dosed um, an iron and manganese supplement, or C, C elements, it has other trace elements in it, uh, but I noticed uh, dosing this that the purple ganyapur uh, responded rather uh, well. The polyps would actually expand more whenever right. I dosed it. And so then I isolated that where I, I discovered it was really the manganese that was making that happen. And this one also is manganese, right? Yes, the refugite is a, a mineral rich sand um, that includes both iron and manganese a, as its main uh, components. It's a natural sand, um, so it's, you know, it's not artificial. But eventually manganese. it runs out, right? No, actually no? It, it does not. Uh, so this is a good way, kind of like having a buffer of maintaining a base level of iron and manganese in the aquarium. Having a, a liquid supplement gives you the ability to, to dose it and, and maintain a higher level. Because so you don't need to change this one? You do not need to change it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I it is. To well, there there is another substrate, uh, a mud-based uh, yeah, substrate. Yeah, that one has to be changed, which is yes, a Yes, it's a finer uh, material. This is actually a sand. Oh, uh, that's right. And, it, yeah, and, it it, and it's perpetually uh, useful in the oh. aquarium. You You know, uh, you would need to vacuum it occasionally, you know, to as clean all sands yeah. do, they get... Oh, but it also says she, there's also catalophilias. Right, all of the LPS corals really do appreciate the iron manganese. and manganese. Uh, Ganyapora, for some reason, uh, really seems to require it. Uh, some species more than others, but the, the issue with Ganyapora's uh, fading was always a bleaching phenomenon. So if you yeah. if you look up on Google, do a, a search for. And I got that lady. It was bleaching, yeah. and now the colors coming. The colors back. coming back when you dose the the iron and manganese. You see that. The and color I dose up. it every two weeks. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. That's fine. At, at minimum, you can dose it weekly. Uh, iron. Could you put it in the doser? You could. Yes, you could. What would you recommend for every hundred gallons? Oh. I'd have to look at the One, instructions yeah. and remember what I, I had written because it was Just, based on my, yeah. off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, and, and of course you can 
always uh, take a product like this, dilute it with uh, reverse osmosis water, mm. and you can yeah, 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 you yeah, can right. set your dosing rate that way. You don't want to mix this with any other supplement. Um, you can have other supplements going into the aquarium, but you don't want to mix this in the same dosing reservoir with another supplement. Um, what I wanted to say about the bleaching phenomenon, at, if you do a Google search uh, for Julian Sprung, Ganiopora, iron and manganese, mm. uh, you'll probably find the original articles I wrote about it that was in Advanced Aquarist mm. online. And I, I hypothesized at that time that this helped with the bleaching because one of the causes of bleaching is the production of superoxide free radicals. Uh, when um, like you have ozone, photosynthesis, right? it's like, kind of like ozone. Too uh, much light breaks out. Too. Yes, the the light produces active oxygen through photosynthesis, and that's harmful to I the think coral. That's on your book. I think yeah. I remember something. Well, yeah, that is in I the know. reef aquarium books. Well, maybe the three. Maybe. So I don't remember. what is true is that manganese is an important uh, metal in enzymes that are used to detoxify active mm. oxygen. So reading that, I propose that maybe that is why it helps. So it's not necessarily that the coral has some special need for iron and manganese, which it may, this I don't know. But dosing this and making sure there's some available at least gives them the ability to um, form the enzymes that would help them deal with active oxygen. Um, you, I mean, you really can see it. They color up, um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they, you know, they begin expanding again. Whereas uh, the bleaching phenomenon, they lose color and they stop expanding, which means they're trying to reduce their surface area. They're trying not to photosynthesize, mm, exactly. which ultimately leads to them starving to death. So having the availability of the iron and manganese uh, takes care of that. What about your salt? Does your salt has a little bit extra more concern? on that sense or um, just try to get it closer to natural sea we water? we try to get it closer to natural sea water um, there is iron and manganese in there but not excess you have to be careful with iron and manganese algae, because right? they make algae grow that is correct um, and the reason why you might want to dose iron and manganese is that they really have a very short life in the water uh, they're rapidly taken up either by algae or by the corals, mm. they're utilized. They, they are biologically um, important. important. Right. Beautiful. So, that's it. They're also oxidized readily in the water, so see? they just don't stay long. Right. Uh, All right, guys. Thank you. Nice to meet you and see you here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Cheers. All right. Boom. Done. Okay.